welcome back. Hey, it's been a while, but I am Mike the Pan Man, MikeThePanMan.com, also known as Not Chef Mike. It's been a while since we put any videos up, but we're really excited about uh, doing a new series of them right now. So some people have uh, written us or asked us to do a few things in particular. I just washed my hands. We're going to start with meatloaf and potatoes today. We're going to show you that, okay? So, babe, come over here. This is my wife, Debbie, behind the camera. Hey. Thank you, babe. Uh, so we've been preheating this. If you look here, it's exactly on medium. Now, a lot of people uh, don't know where medium is on their stove. So here's what I say. Medium uh, is halfway between high and off. That's pretty, uh, pretty simple. On a gas stove, medium is where the flame is barely hitting the bottom and low is when the flame, uh, when you can barely see the flame, okay? So I have washed my hands, but I'm gonna do a little thing here to show you how do you know when the pan is preheated. Okay, so we've got nothing in the pan at all, all right? But when you flick water in it and it dances like that, like kind of like mercury, that means it's hot enough to put the meat in. So I have a meatloaf prepared, okay? And what we're gonna do with this meatloaf is just simply drop it right in, okay? And that's gonna sizzle. Matter of fact, it's a little bit hot, so I'm gonna slide it off a little bit and just kind of let that, uh, I'm gonna let it sear on one side, okay? Gonna let it sear on one side, and then we'll flip that over, okay? In the meantime, over here we've got our Towncraft uh, cutter. We call it the King Cutter. It's got five blades. Uh, perhaps you've seen one of these. A lot of people when we have our shows, our fairs, and that sort of stuff say, hey, my grandma had one of those, my aunt, my mom has had one all of her life. And so we're gonna show you how this works. We're gonna cut up our potatoes uh, for our meatloaf, okay? So the new one, more ergonomic, okay? As you might have remembered, the other one stood straight up and whatever you uh, had, you had to push the bowl straight against it. But this one's more ergonomic. It's got ball bearings. I mean, this one is fabulous, okay? So what we've got on there is we've got our French fry blade, okay? And we're going to simply cut up. Now, I've already uh, took the bad places off these potatoes, but so simple, so easy. Isn't that beautiful? And uh, so we'll do a few of these potatoes in here. We're going to switch blades in a minute to kind of show you uh, some of the other cuts. But so easy, so fast, okay? Just run them right through there. And, uh, and you know, there is a... There is a uh, guard that comes with it so you don't have to stick your hand in there uh, like I am but I've been doing it for quite a while but let me switch blades here okay so again that was our french fry blade and this is our potato chip or actually ruffles has ridges blade okay I'll show you really really neat cut there isn't that beautiful okay that cut so perfect for that. Again, that's what I call the Ruffles Has Ridges Blade. You're welcome, Frito Lay. You can send me a. Uh, you can send me a, a free uh, bag of Fritos or Doritos or I mean uh, Ruffles for doing that. That's also great for pickles, that sort of thing. This is a shredder blade. Okay, this is great for hash browns or anything you want to cut up like that. Isn't that beautiful? How. How neat that cuts that up. All right. I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to put this back on back on the uh, eye. So that'll be uh, working on that, getting that uh, hot again. I'll let it go a little long. So back over here, right? All right. Now this is our uh, stringer blade. Okay. You'll be, it'll be neat to show you how this comes out. Just, uh, just run everything through there. You see that? And beautiful. Uh, when I was little, which was a long time ago, <laughs> when I was little, we used to get from time to time these little boxes, uh, or actually it was a little canister of uh, potato sticks. You all remember those? Mm -hmm. And those were cut up like that right there and, and fried up. And here's the last one. This is the regular potato chip blade, okay? So flat potatoes. Again, pickles, anything you want like that, if you want it cut up really, really thin. This is perfect for all gratin potatoes and that sort of thing, okay? All right, so that's our cutter. 
And uh, what we've done is we've cut those potatoes up into hot water because of all of the uh, starch, all right? So let me get those, those aside. And I'm simply going to, um, I got our Towncraft six quart colander here. Just going to strain that through there and rinse that off to try to get some of that uh, starch off. You can see that, babe? See that? I hope you guys are doing well out there. I sure am glad for us to be back here giving you some more videos. And we'll be putting up several videos as we go here over the next little bit, okay? Because we've got, uh, got a nice place to do it in again now here as far as uh, uh, able to show it well. Okay, so, so now I've got cold water going on them. And really some of that starch. All right. We'll let those drain for just a moment. Back over here, baby. We're going to come back around here. I'm going to simply cut this meatloaf in half. And by the way, uh, I mean, honestly, it doesn't look great on the outside. And the reason for that is uh, I made this meatloaf a few days ago put it together, and I'll give you the recipe here in a minute, but I put it together. We were going to have our friends Chris and Shelly Griffith over for supper, and uh, and Debbie got to where she wasn't feeling very well, so I had to freeze it. Now, when you freeze it, it uh, doesn't hurt it at all. I just had to thaw it out. When you thaw it out, sometimes it gets a little brown colored on that outside, but you can see on the inside, it's really, really good and pink. It's, in, it's a great uh, meatloaf. What we did... As far as the meatloaf goes, we use uh, the typical recipe is two pounds of ground beef. I use 80-20 or um, eight, yeah, 80-20 ground chuck. One cup of um, uh, one cup of uh, panko crumbs, Italian flavored crumbs, panko. I used to just use Italian bread crumbs, panko. I like it better. Uh, and then uh, um, two tablespoons of uh, minced onions, one eight ounce tomato sauce, and one egg, okay? Now in this, I did three pounds, we were having company. So I did three pounds of meat, uh, a cup all the way up to the top of the panko, uh, two heaping tablespoons of minced onions, uh, one eight ounce tomato sauce, and two eggs. Okay, the eggs just help it hold together better, okay? Uh, so, all right, so I have Got the meatloaf in, I've got it browned, I've got it on one side, and now I've got my potatoes that we cut up and rinsed off. I'm just going to dump them in on top, okay? And uh, I'm going to put the lid on it, and there you go, folks. There we go. That's our meatloaf and potatoes. We'll come back in just a little bit. What, babe? Say it. No carrots? No carrots with this, okay? We're not going to do carrots in this one. Why? Because I don't have any carrots. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we ate the carrots last night. Sure did. Anyway, uh, I'm going to put this on. We're going to pause it here. We'll come back and show you in a little bit how it works. All right. Okay. Hey, folks, so we're steaming now. Can you see that steam coming out of there? Uh, I had a lady ask me not too long ago, how do you know when it's steaming? Okay, so uh, <laughs> it's steaming. Can you see it's steaming? Steam kind of looks like uh, fog on a little lighter. <laughs> Anyhow, it's coming out, it's steaming. You see back over here, baby, you're showing that's mm -hmm. right right on medium. So what we want to do, we want to bring it down about uh, to about half for there now, okay? Our two rhymes, our two rhymes are medium to low is all you need to know and preheat for meat. So uh, we before we put the meat mixture, meatloaf mixture in there, we preheated it, right? We preheated the pan, uh, we dropped the meatloaf in and we browned it, so preheat for meat. And then the second rhyme, medium to low, is all you need to know. So we've got it on medium, and then we turned it to low. Okay, so it's steaming good. You'll want to let it steam good. Now, of course, we just turned it down, so it's so you can see a little bit of steam coming out here, but it is steaming. Um, you know, uh, it don't go immediately all the way to low, because you've just taken all your heat out of it. So go about half, all right? And then, um, and then once it, you know, check it in about five minutes or so because it's going to take a few minutes to adjust on most stoves. But once it steams, turn it down. Uh, once you turn it down, um, check it in five minutes. If it's still steaming hard, okay, if it's spitting and sputtering, it's too hot, so bump it on down. 
uh, if it's locked down, it's too cold. Okay, so you got to find that place. Now, we've got a flat top stove here, which is typically a little warmer than most. This one is. This one doesn't seem to be. This is typically a little warmer than most stoves. Flat top stoves, and when I say medium, uh, it's relative. Okay, so you got to figure it out. Just so. Uh, figure out where medium is, figure out where low is. As I told you on a gas stove earlier, uh, that's easy to figure out because you can see the flame. But on a on a on an electric stove, you've got four different eyes, and you may have four different temperatures. Okay, so medium uh, is uh, is when the flame is. Uh, well, I mean, I told you that on gas. So anyway, medium is when uh, you you've got it right in between the middle. Right, it says medium or ten. So go to five, right? That's pretty simple. But low, you're gonna to have to figure out, okay? It's relative to your stove. So what I've done is I, I turned it down about halfway from medium, so to a quarter, of course. And then uh, from there, uh, you're just gonna to have to see what happens, all right? So once you turn it down, give it about five minutes to adjust, come back over here. If it's locked down, it's too low. If it's spitting and sputtering, it's too high, okay? So you just adjust it back up a little bit, or adjust it back down a little bit. Now on the meatloaf mixture that I made earlier, okay, I, I didn't just put it all together. What you got to do, you got to put it in a bowl, you got to mix it together. Uh, if you've got a, a KitchenAid with a dough hook, right, well, you've got a KitchenAid with a dough hook on it, that's great, something like that, and just put it in there and let it mix up. Um, I put the seasonings in first, let them sit for about 10 or 15 minutes, kind of blend. Okay, and then uh, and then I put the meat in, and then I and I I let it go for about 15 minutes. When I take it out, okay, it's all it's all in a ball or whatever. I've got good countertops here, good um, flat countertops. Okay, and so uh, so I just drop it on here. I kind of pat it together. I flip it over. I pat it out. What you've got to do is you've got to get the air bubbles out of that. Okay, you got to get the air bubbles out of it because it's the air that makes it fall apart. Okay, uh, if you don't have one of these, maybe you've got a glass cutting board, something like that. Okay, but do that. Um, I put it on a styrofoam plate and I spray it with Pam. I spray the bottom with Pam. Okay, now typically you don't have to spray the pans at all uh, for putting meat in there, but this one has so much breading in it and all that sort of stuff, it will stick. Okay, so. You don't have to spray the pan, but spray the meatloaf mixture, okay? And just on bottom, okay? Spray that on bottom, uh, and then you saw how easily it cut, flipped over, all that sort of stuff. And so we're gonna let this cook for a little bit, and we'll come back. 